Hey, what's up? Uh, this is Aaron LeBauer with the Cash PG Lunch Hour. Welcome back to the show today. My guest is Casey Coleman. Casey is from Pre-PT Grind, and he is a physical therapist and helps physical therapists uh, or pre-physical therapists get into PT school without wasting time or money. And Casey and I have known each other since he was a student. And uh, so, Casey, welcome to the show. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And yeah, it's been, it's been a while since we've known each other. It feels like it's gone by really fast, but at the same time, it's like, wait, it has been a while. So yeah, thanks for having yeah. me. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I wanted to have you on the show for a couple of reasons and mainly because uh, of what you guys are doing to help people get into school. And there's a lot of topics around school and, and a lot of those things. And um, I've just kind of seen the way that you guys have uh, created your own success and paved your path, done something brand new. Um, and like, I barely got into PT school myself. <laughs> like I got lucky. I got like one or two uh, points right on the GRE more than I needed to get in. And I think we shared that. I, I might've shared that on your podcast, but without that, like I would have been like, well, how do I, you know, what do I do? Cause I was living in a, um, in one place. I knew I could only go to a few different schools um, cause I was an older student, but would love to go back and find out a little bit more about you. Like, how'd you get into PT school, um, in the first place? How'd you know that, uh, that's where you wanted to go? Yeah. So going back to even before undergrad of college, I was kind of debating between pharmacy and mm -hmm. physical therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, then before my first, my freshman year in college, I got into the summer internship program for pharmacy and it was super competitive. It was paid. It was sponsored by Walgreens and another major uh, grocery uh, chain in Chicago, in the Chicago area. And I was like, shoot, I got into that. This must mm -hmm. be a sign. I should go pharmacy because I don't know how I got into this thing. This is super competitive. So this is obviously a sign to go pharmacy. So I did that internship, uh, went into undergrad as a pre-pharmacy major, and uh, had a plan to finish in six to seven years and be a pharmacist and mm -hmm. see those dollar signs and push pills and all that stuff. Uh, but then just something didn't feel right. I was always conflicted between the two, whether pharmacy or PT. And that was just after pharmacy for the perceived dollar signs. Because right. I just went on Forbes or I went on Google and I saw pharmacists make 110 or 120. And I saw PTs make 80 or 90 or 70, whatever. And I was like, well, I'll just be a pharmacist because they make a little bit more. And I had no idea that Aaron was doing these things or Greg or Paul or people. It was possible to do this with physical therapy. So I just went pharmacy. Mm -hmm. So I was conflicted and I researched pharmacy a little bit more and I just didn't like it. Uh, didn't like what I saw on the job market and things like that. So switched over to uh, physical therapy, uh, the pre-PT track um, after my freshman year. And during that time when I was switching and debating switching, I ran into a lot of my friends. One is the co-founder of pre-PT grind now, mm -hmm. Joseph. And they were all like, yeah, pre-PT this, I'm pre-PT that. Because on our campus, the two big schools were the, the physical therapy school and the architecture school. Okay. Um, there was a nursing school as well, but um, some other sister colleges had bigger nursing programs. So uh, if you were a pre-PT or architecture that route, you were the stuff, you were it. So everybody was pre-PT and I was like, all right, I'll switch over. So I did that. Uh, long story short, I applied to our three plus three program mm -hmm. uh, in our school. And that year that I applied, I was a junior trying to get into that three plus three program and they weren't letting anybody in. Uh, or even interviewing anybody with less than a 3.5, and I had a 3.4. Yeah. But the thing was, I had a 3.4 when I was taking general biology, general chemistry, uh, all the harder classes to be a pharmacist, to get into pharmacy school, mm -hmm. when the pre-PTs were taking whatever was needed in their track uh, to get into PT school, like the intro to PT, uh, the intro to bio, and they were chilling with like 3.9s, 4.0s, and I was struggling with my 3.4. I was living i was yeah. i was man i was like are you serious you guys don't wait any of these classes all that stuff right so uh didn't get in talked with the advisor had to retake some classes uh and that summer i had like i don't know 800 in my bank account had to uh, pay for a class anatomy one which was like 1200 bucks then had to work again to pay for the second anatomy class which was another 1200 luckily my parents are great they helped me out um, to get that first class but i had to work for the second class and in that time uh, the co-founder now of Pre-PT Grind, Joseph, reached out to me because he had a project for a class he was taking at our school. And he chose our project or he chose his project to be helping Pre-PT students because a lot of our friends um, just started dropping like flies when they got an F in a test in biology or got a C in chemistry. And the advisor was like, nope, don't even think about it. 
no, nope, yep. do something else. Nope, you can't do it, which is a lot what we hear now. So he was like, yeah, Casey, I, I heard about your experience. I saw it and you have a different perspective and I would love you to be a mentor in a program I'm starting for this leadership class I have to do for my project. So uh, we did that and we turned that into basically uh, a pre-PT club at our school, right? So that's how that happened. And the whole year where I was reapplying, I was doing that. Uh, I was one of the mentors with Joseph in that program. Mm -hmm. uh, fast forward a little bit more. I found this guy, Greg Todd, who's a friend of yours. And I learned from him. And when we were about to finish PT school, um, and this is fast forwarding a lot. I got into PT yeah. school, all that good stuff. Uh, when we were finishing PT school, Joseph was about to graduate. I was about to go on my clinical internships. And um, Joseph saw me doing all this stuff online, like writing blogs and stuff. He was like, yo, what are they doing? Are they teaching anything different? I was like, no, I'm learning from these people online. And he was like, okay, what are we going to do with this pre-PT program um, that we started at school? Are we going to give them to different schools and do this and that? I was like, that's cute and all, but this is what I learned. This is what we could possibly do. And basically, I was telling him about everything that we're doing now. We can take it right. online, uh, you know, meet people from Hawaii and Japan and Brazil and Italy and Florida and Washington State and all that stuff and make this, just blow this up, right? So he was like, all right, I guess I'll listen to this guy and these guys. And then we went to SSPT uh, Live and met you and all the other people and just grown from there. And now it's became what it is now. Um, just from that kind of pre-PT club and that story going forward. Wow. There's a lot more little details in there, but that's the kind of synopsis. Yeah, of that's awesome. So now you guys have like a, you guys have a couple different ways to help pre-PTs get into school. You've got like a, what like a course, do you run like a course or like the accepted system is like a course or it's some program that you run probably every couple of times, couple times a year. And then you have like a podcast and Facebook group and some other things, right? Like, how, are you yeah, helping exactly. people all over or still just in Chicago or? No, this is online. This is everywhere. This is worldwide. We do have a good amount of people from Chicago. We got about three or four people from Hawaii. We got some international people mm -hmm. um, all over the country, all over the country. So YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, podcasts, everywhere that people can find us, they find us. So wherever they are, we just put out our social media stuff and they find us and yeah. we help them with wherever they are, whether it's, uh, working with us in the accepted system with our highest coaching program or just getting one of our uh, free lead magnets or joining our free Facebook group mm -hmm. or whatever that is they need. We have different things to help them kind of wherever yeah. they are. What's the number one problem that students are struggling with when they're not getting into PT school that you guys are helping them? Like what's the, what's the thing? What's the key that they're missing? Yeah. So that's a good question. Number one, you kind of hit it um, before yeah. uh, the advisor trap. Um, a lot of people talk about that, um, where they're just like, yeah, I was talking to my advisor and they just said, no, it's not for you. But the advisor is just doing their job. They're looking at a sheet of paper and looking at the PT requirements and saying, hey, you don't match up. So maybe it's your best interest to maybe try something else. Then, all right, next student, the, the next student comes up as a pre-med or pre-dent student. Yeah. They look at their sheets. And they say, all right, you match up or not. All right, next student. And they're just doing their job. They're not really malicious, but... Then in the pre-PT's minds, they're like, oh my gosh, I can't do that. So that's the first problem. They kind of fall into that trap. And the second problem, under all of the application stuff, under GRE, under the GPA, under the essays, whatever they're struggling with, under all of that, what we've really found over the years is their confidence level of getting mm -hmm. into PT school. That's really the underlying basis of what really changes them. Because if they go in there as like, uh, like do you guys accept me? I have a three point two do you guys take me I, I struggle with the gre but i can still be in your program right i can still be a physical therapist oh i'm not good at this like that's a totally different vibe and mentality and even even from you as a business owner from hiring mm -hmm. people from that stance that's a totally different vibe and energy from somebody going and saying hey i researched this profession this is what i learned about manual therapy and myofascial release i learned x y and z i would just want to know if you had any more questions about this right. i also learned this and this and that i learned that and that i'm super excited what do you know what can i learn like, so that going in there with that confidence and that knowledge totally is like, oh, who is, who is Jessica? Where mm -hmm. has this pre-PT been? This is who I need in my school in this profession. So under all of that stuff, we found if they change that underlying confidence and their knowledge base about what they're trying to do and accomplish, everything else on top of that shifts and changes uh, for them to be who they want to be. Do you think some of that has to do with people just being young and not really knowing? They just think it's a good idea to go to PT school? I agree. I agree. Uh, because I was one of them. I was, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people were too, like I mentioned before, 
I just saw this thing online and was like, hey, looks cool, looks good, looks fun. Let me let me try and get in. But then they went and run into that brick uh, that brick wall like, oh, there's a lot more to this. Oh, I didn't know it was that hard. I was reading some comments on TikTok the other day. Uh, to your point, yeah. um, there was one of our videos that went viral where I was um, looking at this anatomy poster with all the different muscle names to all the smallest muscles to all the biggest muscles. And a few comments on there were like, hey, I was thinking about PT until I saw this video and all these muscles. Now I'm not, I don't think I should do it anymore. I'm like, what? What, what do you mean? What do you mean? So to your right. point, yeah, I think that might be, uh, that might be some of it too. So when they come into our world, uh, we try and educate them on what it really takes to be like Aaron LeBauer. So yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah. Oh, so you teach people how to be like me. <laughs> no, we try. Then we introduce them to you. Hey, hey, watch this guy. Yeah. If you know, that's, that's what fine. you want to be, you. hey, go to him. The funny thing is, and, and I'm sure this is, uh, well, you guys work with a lot of like people doing second careers, trying to get back into school too. Is that Absolutely, right? that was what's, surprising to us. Yeah. Yeah. What's the big difference from from your perspective on people who have already, you know, are five to ten years out of undergrad, going trying to get back into PT school versus people who are still in undergrad? What's the what's the desire or problem? What's the thing that they're struggling with? Um, surprisingly, it's kind of the same thing that we see on some forums sometimes. Mm -hmm. As like, oh, I'm not happy. I'm not. Build, I'm burnt out in physical therapy or PT, and that's why they switch to something else. Yeah. That's what we kind of see with other professions, whether um, they were teachers or EMTs or athletic trainers or personal trainers. They're like, I just, I want something more. I want something different. This is not what I want to do. Then they switch over. Um, but what we found as well is they still have the same problems, like the same problems the business uh, owners mm -hmm. that you work with have. Like I've worked with some business owners as well, and I'm like, wait, these are the same baseline foundational issues that right. pre-PTs have. So what we found is that they have the same fears of not being good enough as the traditional mm -hmm. 20, 19 year old pre-PT. They look at them like, oh man, you're a traditional student. You got it all figured out. It must be nice for you. Then the, pre the <laughs> traditional 19, 20 year old pre-PT is looking at them like, oh man, you're so different. You're a non-traditional uh, student. You're coming from another career. You have all this different background information. You have all this knowledge. It must be nice for you. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh my gosh, they have the same core issues. So that was surprising that we found. But uh, the difference is, is really um, that the non-traditional students are just kind of stuck with their previous career and want something different. And the traditional, I guess, students from undergrad are just like, yeah, I see this career and I want to go for it full force. So yeah, I hope that answers your yeah, question. Yeah, no, that does. The biggest roadblock for me when, you know, there were two. When I lived in California, my wife was, I didn't really want to be a PT, but my wife was like, yeah, I was a massage therapist. She's like, Aaron, you should look into PT school. And I did. And I looked into the PT schools within like an hour drive of San Francisco where I was living. And for all of them, I was pretty much going to have to take another two and a half years of prerequisites. Like I was pre-med, <laughs> but because of the different, like I never took kinesiology or human anatomy or anything. I took all my chemistry, calculus, biology, et cetera. And so that was, uh, that was uh, going to be impossible for me because I wasn't going to take another 10 courses after I already had an undergrad degree to go to PT school. We moved to North Carolina and I didn't have, I only had to take two classes to get into Elon or four to go to Chapel Hill or Duke. But the thing that almost kept me from even wanting to apply was the requirement that you had to have a whatever 3.2 GPA or whatever with in, in courses taken within the last 10 years. And I was like, I took these classes 12 years ago. I got the scores I need. I've been working in the healthcare field. Like, can I apply? And they were like, technically no, but just apply and we'll make an, ex you know? And I was just like, what? this just seems kind of weird <laughs> that they would put that out like an arbitrary 10 years. Like I wasn't, like I lost all my intelligence in 10 years or something like that. Have you seen that? Or is that still happening these days? It is still happening. It is still happening. Fortunately with a good amount of schools, we're seeing that they have waivers available. Uh, so they just basically want to see that you've been keeping up with your knowledge base. They don't want to see that, okay, you went into finances and you took anatomy 10 years ago and you don't remember what the, you know, the pec minor is or something right. like that. When you're going to be crushed with anatomy your first year, they're, they're like, wait, just let me make sure you're okay. So I understand it from the school's point of view, but for your, uh, for your example, they do have waivers available. Like, yeah. Hey, I've been a massage therapist for the past 10 years. I know what the pec minor is. I know what the, you know, whatever muscle is I'm good. And if you send in that waiver and they approve, then you're fine. You're good. We've seen that with personal trainers, massage therapists, EMTs, 
uh, medical scribes and things like that. So that's the great thing. They just basically want to see, hey, are you going to be able to handle this? Do you remember what you're doing? All right, you do? All right, cool. And we're good to right. go. So that's been a good thing about it. But I do still see the five years and 10 years uh, out there. So yeah. I was, like, I was like, this is kind of hard. But I was like, this is stupid. But I couldn't, like for a couple of days, I couldn't get in touch with anyone. You know, or I finally did. And this guy was like, and I, but I had to be, here's the thing is I had to be persistent. I had to actually drive to Chapel Hill and mm. go find the building and walk in there and hand the guy my resume and say, hey, I graduated, you know, from Duke. I know you guys don't like Duke, but I graduated from Duke 12 <laughs> years ago. I, you know, like I busted my ass to get a 3.2. I've been a massage therapist for 10 years. Like, can I, you know, will, will these count? Because I'm not going back to school for you know, four more years. Right. I'm not doing that over. And, and they were like, well, yeah, just apply. And I guess part of that lesson is being persistent. And you can really only mm. do that if you know what you want, right? True. Very yeah. true. That's a good point. All right. So, um, see, what is, uh, what I want to know, Casey, is do you even think it's worth becoming a PT anymore? Like, because you, you see, I'm sure you've seen out there all the discussion. Like, you, I'm sure you have a lot of debt. I only just paid off my school loans beginning of this year, I think. I finally finished paying them off. And um, after 11 years, um, and a lot of people come out with a lot of debt, you know, uh, salary, especially outpatient orthopedic is not going up. It's actually probably coming down for doctors of physical therapy. Do you think it's worth becoming a PT anymore? Yeah, this is a huge question. We could do a whole podcast about this. You know, this is, this is huge. But a few things about that is broad answer, yes. Uh, but a few points inside of that is one, if you decrease the cost first, then two, if you become like an Aaron LeBauer and increase your earning potential after, of course. But if you're just going to go and be an average PT, you're going to get paid average and it's not going to be a good investment. For you. Yeah. That's the biggest thing we want to get across. Like, hey, if you just see yourself being in a clinic and doing, I guess, the bare minimum, uh, then you might not be happy. It might not be the best time for you to do this if you want to do that and that's your goal. But if you want to be like us or Aaron or Greg or the people out there who are doing big things and blowing this perceived salary out the water, it doesn't even matter anymore. Then, hey, this is a great career to help people uh, in pain without, sur without having surgeries, without injections, without medications. Absolutely. Go for it. But you're an adult. You got to know what you're getting into. You got to know how much this costs. You have a... Oops. AirPod fell out. Getting you excited. have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> right? Do you have a plan for this? right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's going to be the difference between if you're going to be like uh, a physical therapist who you observed, who's like, you know, unhappy with their job, as opposed to being like an Aaron LaBauer. So mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things, that's why I say, yes, it is still a good investment. It is still a good career. It's a great career um, to go into if you're going to be great, if you have a greater vision for this. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing, the other thing about that is, um, I think they need to understand how these finances all work in general, mm -hmm. not just from the DPT school, but I think they need to understand on a deeper level that it's not the department chair's decision to put that price on it. And that's why different DPT schools cost different amounts. Mm -hmm. So in Texas, there's a lot of low cost schools in state schools. There's a lot of low cost. There's every school out there. Isn't 150. Every yeah. school out there is, isn't 200 grand. There's some 39s, there's some 18s, there's some 60s. And you can find them, you can do that. But at the same time, let's find a deeper reason as to why these schools cost that much. Because going to the point I mentioned before, if you go into an interview or a phone call or a visit, a campus visit with that information, they're going to see you much differently. Right. And your confidence level is going to come off as a, a much greater pre-PT because now you have that foundational knowledge that gives you the confidence to come off as different. You're going in there as the customer because mm -hmm. that's what you are. They need you to pay their tuition so they can get paid. You are their customer. So you need to go in there saying, hey, I've seen that this school costs 39, but your school, your school costs 100 grand. But I've also realized that you don't really have that decision as the department chair or the faculty member. I've heard that there's a higher body above you that actually puts these prices in place as a university. Uh, I just want to know how that works. Can I get in touch with them? How does that break down? How much do you know about them? Then they'll be like, oh, okay, who's this person? <laughs> so if you do your own, going back to your point, if you're persistent and you do your own research, you know what you're getting into, that brings a whole new element into who you are and what they see you as becoming as a physical therapist as well. So if you do your research in the finances as well, 
then you want to become like an Aaron LeBauer and um, make as much money as you can, then yeah, you can pay off your 60 grand or 39 grand as a physical therapist, or you can pay off your 150 as a physical therapist in five years or six years, then great. It's a great career. Yeah. So that's what I want people to focus on. Let's, I see so many forums. I see so many t people talking about how, how much debt you're in and how much you need to cut back on and how much this, like all the negative stuff. And I get it. Like I'm conservative with my finances. I totally understand. We've had that conversation a million times, mm -hmm. but how many people are really like you and Greg and Paul and Kyle Rice and all these people and who are saying, and okay, <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and are who, are, who are saying, yeah, I see that problem. It is a problem. We need to fix it. Mm -hmm. But we can't just fix that institutional student loan government problem. That's not a PT specific problem. Let's yeah. step away from this for a second. That's not just us. This is an institutional college thing. It's not right. just about us. How are we going to fix that for our people right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's teach them how to earn more so we can pay off that debt and go ahead and live the lives we want. So that's another thing that uh, we're trying to introduce pre PTs to when we take them to live events and introduce them to you. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a problem, but let's focus on how to fix it and how to earn more to alleviate that problem. So mm -hmm. I rambled, but yeah. that's no, my that's synopsis okay. about that. But that's part of it is you have to have a bigger vision for what you want to do and not just go get a job because there's easier ways to just get jobs. <laughs> right. And exactly. one of the things that you talked about before we uh, went on is that you're still treating patients outpatient, but you're doing this. Mm -hmm. And I know that you've been writing article, you've written articles for covalent careers and other blogs and stuff like, you're always doing more than just having a job, right? So what kind of like, what kind of other things you're, you're doing pre PT grind, you're doing, you, you've got your outpatient job. Are you still, are you doing anything else right now? Are you, or are those the two main things that you're focused on? Yeah. So those are the two main things right now. I'm just finishing up with covalent careers and being their publications director. I was mm -hmm. their social media director. I wrote blogs for them in PT school and things mm -hmm. like that. I was helping also other business owners. I was coaching them last year. Uh, finished that a few months ago. So last year I was doing a lot more stuff. And now the main two things is outpatient job and yeah. um, pre PT grind, the accepted system yeah. and just pushing that forward and blowing that up. So it's, it's doable. That's it's, awesome. it's definitely doable. So besides creating your own thing, like while we're on the topic, what are some of the other opportunities that you've had that maybe you turned down um, or that other that you've seen other people do besides creating their own thing, but uh, to supplement their income, to pay back their loans or to just have, you know, create more impact in their career. Yeah, I'm actually gonna turn this to our students yeah. because in our accepted system, and I'm so proud of them, in our accepted system, we have an internship. It's called the yeah. Busy to Business Internship where we teach pre-PTs um, simple skills to earn more revenue as a pre-PT and, pre mm -hmm. and PT student and physical therapist where they can start using that now. So if Aaron needs somebody to help with the podcast, boom, you're learning those skills inside the accepted system. Uh, to then go out and make more money and, and learn and grow these skills to be yeah. whoever you want to be as a PT. And you, now you have that skill as a PT uh, with whatever you want to do in that career. Um, so that they're already doing, they're already <laughs> putting in video editing, copywriting, emails, podcasts, this and that, um, network, all that stuff is in there. So now they can do that as pre-PTs. They can do that as physical therapy students. Going yeah. back to the student loan problem, they can pay off five grand if they want in a year, or they can use that five grand and invest it in the stock market or do right. whatever. And now they have the freedom to not just be so locked in into that average everyday job without anywhere else to go, without other opportunities. Right. Right. So they have the opportunity to do whatever they want and build on those skill set to be whoever they want to be. So. Yeah, I'm, but I'm super proud of them. Casey, schools say you shouldn't have a job while you're in school. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. Um, but I've had a job, and this is what I've told a lot of students. Yeah. Um, my jobs, jobs weren't the typical nine to five where I was locked into something I had to do for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. So I was driving Uber. I was a golf caddy. I was writing blogs. I was starting pre-PT grind. I was selling stuff on eBay. And those, all, those things were all satellites around my main priority of physical therapy school. Right. So if you're doing podcasting, if you're doing video editing, writing blogs, mowing the lawn, mowing, shoveling someone's snow, that all can be around your main priority of PT school. So you can have as many jobs as you want, as long as they're flexible around your main priority. And that's what it is. But I think when advisors and 
um, uh, teachers say you can't have a job, they might just be thinking, hey, you can't be a PT tech for 20 hours a week locked in, which right. I mean, some people may or may not, that's their decision, but you can do whatever you want if you can handle it and make sure your main priority is there. So I think you can. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I did too. I mean, I, uh, I worked, I think I saw six to eight massage patients a week, which is, mm. you know, a good $800 or so, eight, five to $800 a week, depending. The thing that annoyed me was uh, we had, we would have Wednesdays off and I would see my patients on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Tuesday, they'd be like, all right, you guys need to meet here tomorrow for lab. And I'm like, uh, you can't just bring that on me and, you know, like the afternoon on Tuesday. Um, you know, and, uh, but I do think like there's a lot of different ways to make a living and, and generate money and help people. Um, and I, and I see that you guys are, are crushing it that way. So, um, I just want to ask a few more questions about getting into PT school or not. Like who is like, who's PT? We've talked a little bit about this, but Let's say, would you say that if someone wants to be a PT, they can, they can find a school in America or elsewhere to become a PT, you know, even if they've been like, you know, uh, not been accepted a few times or, you know, is there always a place for someone you know, who really wants it? I, I, see where, I, I see what you're saying. So if someone has like a 3.0 and is at the bottom of the scale, right? Do they yeah. still have a chance to kind of get in? So what we've seen is that the possibility of you getting in isn't necessarily the problem or the opportunity isn't necessarily the problem. It's just the pool of where you can apply is mm -hmm. smaller. Mm -hmm. So if you have a 3.7, you can still get denied or accepted. We've seen people with 4.0s get denied. You can still get denied or accepted, but you just have a bigger pool to apply to. Yeah. Whereas if you have a lower GPA or lower stat, according to what the schools want, now you just have a pool of this many schools to apply to. Mm -hmm. Now we have to target them and be persistent and do our research and everything we t uh, talk about in the accepted system to get into one of those smaller schools or one of those schools in that smaller pool. So yeah, it is possible. Either way, you can get denied or accepted. We just have to make sure and realize that how these different pools work yeah. because you can still get in. It's just the size of um, the opportunities, I guess right. you can say, of right. getting in is just different. What are the, like, do you, like, do you offhand, do you know, like, what are the top, you know, three to five schools that are, you know, most underknown or undervalued that people should be looking at? Um, so, yeah, I can give them actually a tangible resource. Uh, CAPTE, I think it's .org. I don't believe uh -huh. it's .com, but CAPTE, C-A-P-T-E. Uh, one of the tabs says, like, new programs or on the verge of being accredited and things like that. Something yeah. like that. If you just Google that and go to that website. If you go to the programs in candidacy, meaning they've done all the hard work and, you know, CAPT has approved of them and now they just need a graduating class to be stamped with accreditation. Mm -hmm. Those schools are more accepting to get students into their doors because remember, you are the customer, they are a business and they need more right. students. Right. So those schools, I guess, have not all the time, not all the time, but they have, they're more lenient uh, to lower GPAs and different GRE requirements and things like that because they want more students. So mm -hmm. if anybody's listening to this and they're looking for schools like that, Yes, I would definitely go there. Um, then as well, we have a, D, a GPA data report. If you just message us on Instagram or email us, preptgrind at preptgrind.com, we'll send you our GPA data report and you can go through there and kind of scroll through, okay, these schools have um, an average accepted GPA of a 3.1 or 3.2 and these schools only accept 3.7s and so on and so forth. So then you can strategically apply to those smaller pool of schools that are within your requirements. Yeah. So those yeah. are the two tangible things I would say do. Capti, then email us about our GPA data report. I don't know. What are the what are the like top schools that are the most difficult to get into that pretty much no one does? Like where does everyone want to go? No one gets in, you know, like you're just like, don't even bother. It's not worth <laughs> the, the hassle. Um there's so many schools. The the only one I know really right off top is Army Baylor. Yeah, because like they don't cost any money, but they pay you because they are, you know, in the armed services and yeah. they pay you about 40 grand or so. I think it's a year. It might be the full three years, uh, but they only accept like 24 students. And it's specifically from like um, three in the Navy, two in the Army, something like that. And that's where some people like they want to go and they're like, all right, let's get into there. I'm like, how much do you know about that school? First of all, you just see that school and see zero or, you right. know, a little bit about it. That's that one is like the top 
toughest one to get into. Yeah, do you have to have um, already other, been in the, you have to already be enlisted or something like that to get in probably? I believe so. Or you have to be like planning to go into like uh -huh. civil services or the national guard or something like that. Something yeah. to that effect. Um, then the popular ones rising are like the hybrid schools in terms yeah. of popularity uh, with Baylor, South College, Tufts is coming out as well, Nova Southeastern. So I predict in a few years, they might be a little tougher that everybody wants to go to those schools. Um, but other than those, none come to mind that are like the toughest <laughs> ones to get into. Wow. Right on. And do you guys like, when you help people get into school, is it, is it like, strat is it, interview strategies, application strategies? Is it, you know, helping them figure out like which schools they should apply to or just kind of all of the above kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's all of the above. So basically we apply to PT school with them. Yeah. And I like to divide it into two separate sections. One is like the pre-recorded section, um, you know, the course videos, everything's online and we teach you everything from mindset to have the confidence to exactly which button to pick on PT cast to the perfect script to ask for a letter of recommendation, to how you need to start thinking about your finances and student loans, all the way to how to have a career like Aaron LeBauer. So yeah. every that, everything is in that pre-recorded section. Then we have the live section where you get that one-on-one -on -one coaching from our coaches in the accepted system from a small group, our live weekly sessions for people's cohorts. Then you have access to myself and Joseph through Boxer, accountability partners, the Facebook group, all that stuff. So that's how I like to divide it. And within those two things, then we dive deep into what's your GPA, what's your accepted plan looking like. We have spreadsheets, documents, calculators, all that good stuff to be like from everything like, hey, do you need something super technical? Do you need to know exactly what your GPA is going to be when you apply next year or what your GPA is going to be in the fall? Okay, we got that. If you're good with that, but you just are lacking confidence and don't even know how to ask for a letter of recommendation because you're shaking in your boots, we got that too. We got everything in between. Or if you're scared about student debt and student loans, yeah. all right, let's get you in that internship and let's start making money now and let's apply to lower cost schools. So that's not a problem for you. And yeah. you can become like Aaron LeBauer and without all of that debt and without all of that stress. So yeah. we got everything in between for everything. That yeah. How'd you, how'd you guys figure all that out? That's awesome. Like, what's the, what was the secret? What'd you see that you were like, I need this or we need to teach this. How, how'd you like, you know, you know what I mean? We're still learning now. We just, we, yeah, we, I, I know what you're saying. We're still learning now, but we're just listening to yeah. the audience. Like you preach a lot. We're just listening to them and the little things they say, whether it's in an Instagram comment, I got my ear to the streets, man. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in those comments. I'm in those TikTok comments. I'm like, okay, there's been three people saying, Hey, I need more guidance about observation hours. All right, let's make something real quick in the next week. Let's put it out there. Right. Or, hey, there's been people over the last year who've been saying whatever else is the problem. So we create that and we create this. Uh, so we got some things, some ideas working that might be able to solve like some volunteer opportunities with COVID-19, mm -hmm. um, some uh, like research for schools like we were talking about earlier with spreadsheets and um, interactive platforms that might help them as well. So we don't have everything figured out, but over the years, we've just compiled everything together, put it all in one place. So whatever they need, we have it because we've been listening, because we've been paying attention. And because over the years, we've just been compounding upon that information uh, to get as best as we can. But it's not easy. There's a lot of, no. a lot of little details in there that I still don't know all the time. Yeah, so, it is a ton. But I think the important thing that you mentioned that I hope people get out of this is that you're listening, you're almost surveying, and you're solving problems that people have. Right? That's it. That you kind of had yourself. And so you identify with them. You're like, well... Joe's has helped me solve this problem. I'm helping other people. There are clearly more people that are having these problems and I can see it. So let's go and, and help them solve the problems. Exactly. Right? That's it. Same thing with physical therapy. Same thing with finance. Same thing with grocery stores. Same thing with pre-PTs. They have problems and we're just trying to solve them. Yeah, that's so awesome. Is, um, you know, if most people listening aren't going to be pre-PTs. So What's mm. something that someone who owns a business or is already a physical therapist, what's something they can do to help pre-PTs? And I will say that, you know, one of the struggles that I have in that is we get specific, certain times a year, I will get like 50 emails from the school across the street saying, hey, I need 100 observation hours. Can I do them at your clinic? I'm just like, mm. <laughs> if I have any, it's, you got two, three observation hours because there's not much to observe, you know, and it's... And, and I haven't really found a way to like, how do I actually help them, you know, or what can I do or what can other people do or what's the best way to utilize pre-PTs in our business, you know? 
So that's another thing. My mind was churning when you were talking about that. Yeah. I was listening. I was listening. I was like, dang, we need to somehow create a huge database of physical therapists who are willing to take observation hours. Yeah. I don't know how long that's going to take, how much work, you know, all that stuff. But I'm like, shoot, that should be something on my list that mm -hmm. I should provide to you and other PTs to help you help pre-PTs. Um, but in the meantime, until we figure that out and do it, uh, yeah. if you do have any colleagues in the area who are willing uh, and you know that they have a bigger client base and it's a traditional outpatient practice, I say send them there or just be honest with them and say, hey, this is what I have. If you want to come in, I can give you a, a diversity in your hours. Mm -hmm. I can't give you a lot, but hey, I'm a little different in my practice and this can help you stand out as opposed to just getting a thousand hours in a traditional clinic. I can give you five. I can give you seven in the next three weeks. Are you yeah. willing to do that? I'm a little different. Let me teach you what I know. So that can help you be different and get accepted in a physical therapy school. So you don't have to do everything. You don't have to fill their 100 hours. They're just looking for something. Let, like, let's go back. Let's remember when you guys were pre-PTs. Right. Because you were pre-PTs once. And just remember how it felt like, man, I just need some hours. Somebody please help me. I don't care. Just give me 20. Give me seven. I don't care. If you respond and say, hey, right. I, I understand what you're going through. I was a pre-PT. I got seven hours for you. You willing to come? If they are, hey, great. If they're not, all right, that's a problem right. off your hands. But I say start there, start simple, and uh, don't overthink it because they just need something. They're looking for help, and they're seeing you as like a god almost. They're like, oh, my gosh, this PT, if I can only be like you. So anything that you give them um, almost would be, would be great. So yeah. don't feel like what you're doing and what you're trying to give them isn't serving them enough uh, because you are. You're helping as, as mm -hmm. much or as little as you can. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, what I've always done is um, I tell I'll tell them, hey, you should don't try. I was like, I'm like don't try uh, searching Google for physical therapy clinic. I was like, go find the long term care facilities, the hospitals. You know, their PTs that work there. Like that's probably a better bet. You know, and that's one thing that we've done. And I created a um, and I'm happy to share this with you, uh, a document that just had a bunch of questions that I, a long time ago I'd send out to people and say, hey. Go search and research these questions and tell me how long it takes. And I'll give you a couple hours of observation credit for that. I um, like it. I yeah. like it. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's brilliant. Yeah, but I had one person early on. I had one person come in and I told him and she was like, well, I want to see you treat patients. I was like, that's not on the table. I was like, but if you want to experience what it's like to be a patient, you can become a patient and pay. And I got a message from the advisor. It was like, so-and-so said that you told her she had to pay for observations. And I was like, that is not how it went. And I was uh, like, I'm not dealing with this. I'm too busy. <laughs> you know, and that's where I came up with that um, question list. But it's every year we'll get like 20 to 50 requests. And it's like our, for our arbitrary number of 100 hours. I'm like, that's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, but um, I see that as, a, as an issue. Do you see, um, I guess, let me, let me ask you, uh, what, what's been the most... I'm going to go off, not off topic, but just shift a little bit. What's been the most, um, I'm trying to figure out how do I ask the question? What's been the, 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 the thing that you're the most proud of so far in your career as a, as a physical therapist or before you started, like what's the change or, or the program or the opportunity, like what, what have you done that you felt like, man, this, this thing, man, like, you know, like what's the thing that you've been most proud of that you've done, whether it's a patient or a something, like, what do you think so far? Yeah. So two things immediately come to mind. Uh, one is the live events yeah. that we've been able to bring our students to um, because when we interact with our students, it's online, it's online. And um, sometimes we get to visit them or see them if they're close by, but still it's, it's online and we only see their little bubble or we only talk to them on the phone or it's on FaceTime. So when we saw last year that I think it was, I forgot how many, 70 ish or 60, maybe 50, somewhere in there mm -hmm. um, came and they were all in person. And we were like, shoot, all of this work that we've been doing, this is actually tangible, real yeah. people. Like all this work is actually paying off. And now we have probably, we're going to have over 120 students at the next live event. And it's just like, that's the time we actually get to see that on Tuesday when I was slaving over a free document to give out for free has finally paid off. Yeah. Or all this work that we did over the years to create the accepted system is actually tangible proof that they are here. So that's one of the first things that comes to mind. It's just like, 
whoa. Like, it's just a feeling that it just feels great. It's like when a patient gets better and they're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for helping me get out of back pain. Like that's that same warm, fuzzy feeling that we see when they get accepted or that mm-hmm. we see them in person. And then they're like, hey, Casey, Joseph. It's the same thing. Yeah. So that's the first thing that comes to mind. The second is that I've been pretty close to being able to do what I said I was going to do before I graduate. Mm-hmm. So I got into PT, yes, because the patients and um, because of the job satisfaction. But at the same time, I saw the career opportunities available to me as a physical therapist. And I've been able to take advantage of those clinically and non-clinically to be where I said I want to be at uh, after I graduated. So I was like, man, if I can, if I can get a job that's paying me 80 or 75, but I have something on the side that's paying me 20 grand a year or 15 or 25, I don't have to worry about and stress mm-hmm. over my little 75,000, 80,000 day job because I got 30 on the side. I got 15 over here. So I can treat patients with the love and respect and the dedication that I should without stressing about money because I got all these other opportunities and income sources right. coming in. So I've been able to do that within, I'm only 1.5 years out of school, maybe <laughs> 1.6 and eight. Yeah. And I've been able to get pretty close, if not above that, within that time frame. So that's another thing I've been pretty proud of myself for doing, for actually sticking with it and staying diligent when I thought it wasn't going to happen and all that stuff. But um those are the two things that immediately come yeah. to mind for me that I'm proud of. So That's far. awesome. What, um, what have you guys struggled with the most or what have you struggled with the most um, in your career, business, et cetera? Like, is there something that you did and it didn't work out, <laughs> you know, that you've learned from and said, oh, I'll do it differently again. Like, what's the thing? I wouldn't say it's a mistake as much as like, what's the thing that, you know, you did or tried or tried to put together and you're like, man, that didn't work out the way I thought it would. Um, yeah, what comes to mind is, I believe it was 2018, maybe 19, but one of the years, so our most recent loss to uh, launch, to give you guys context, was 82 students, I believe, which was over 100 grand um, a launch in this, in the past month or so. Yeah. Um, but going back further, one of our launches was five people. Mm-hmm. So five people and, I don't know, three grand. <laughs> Is a lot different from 82 people and 100 and, I don't know, 10 grand or so in a launch. So I think that was the turning point for us where we were like, uh, what happened here? Was it the timing was off? Was it we weren't serving enough? Did we get to where our heads too big? What was that for us? And that was the time where things really didn't work out to your question. Yeah. We were like, I don't, uh, what's going on here? What, what needs to happen? What needs to change? So we made some changes there. And then we built off of that. And the next launch was like 40. Then 45 and um, 60. I think that next launch after the five was 62 people or so. Yeah. Right. Wow. Just because of a small change or smaller changes that we've made from five to 60. Then it went to like 40, then 50, then boom, 82. Yeah. Then the next ones might be 50 and 60 again, then boom, 120. I'm not sure, but that was the turning point where we were like, we got to do something different. We can't have five students for the next 15 years. This is not, right. not going to work. <laughs> So that was the time where stuff didn't work out. Things mm-hmm. were not going how they wanted to, but we made it. We made the change. Yeah. Uh, the changes needed. To what was the, the What do you think it. the problem was? Like, or what did you change that made the biggest difference? Oh, we pivoted. We we rebranded. So now we're mm-hmm. the accepted system. Before yeah. that, we were the pre PT success program. Okay. Which was the name of the project that Joseph made at Andrews University in our school. Mm-hmm. So we before that, before the accepted system, we were the pre-PT success program. Like, it's nice. It sounds good. Just like you tell your business owners how the messaging and marketing is different as opposed to how much you want to charge and what kind of patients you want. We needed to change that to get our patients or our customers, Mm -hmm. quote unquote, that we wanted. So we rebranded, we pivoted, we changed everything. We went full on. Hey, we are the accepted system. We get you into PT school without making, without wasting time or money. We make the impossible applicant possible. We just went ham from there. And from that, it's just been like, oh, I get it now. Right. Oh, I, what's the difference between the pre-PT success program versus the accepted system? Oh, I get the accepted system. It's simple. It's easy. It's easy to catch on. I know what you guys do. Boom. I'm a customer. Yeah. Make it, take my money. So I think that was the pivoting point uh, in our messaging at that time, which made it what we are today. That's so important. That's so important. Um, Casey, do you think, do you, do you have any, um, 
anything else to add? Anything else I should ask you about? Like that you think people need to know whether they're pre PTs, they're PTs or whoever, like for getting into school, business success, anything specific, anything you can think of? Uh, the biggest thing, just mentioning what I did before is as physical therapist, which is your audience listening to yeah. this, remember that you are pre PTs at one point in time when a pre PT messages you or they're in for observation hours or they're asking you about your career and to be real with you and all that stuff. Just remember like these people want to be like you. They are dying to be like you. They're like, if I can just be a physical therapist <laughs> in the blandest outpatient clinic, this would fulfill my life. And you are here complaining about it. Do not give me that, please, please. I am grateful every day that I go into the clinic because of who I work with now. They are dying to be me. They're like, man, if I can just get into whatever clinic, whatever corporate clinic, man, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. And you are here complaining about your little 12 patients you gotta treat. Come on, don't give me that. Are you serious? You're complaining, you were, you were a pre-PT once, dying to be a physical therapist. And now you're complaining about the 12 patients who you said you wanted to help. Right. Come on, let's not do that. Let's not do that because you're making a huge influence on the future of our profession. If you say you want our profession to be better, then you need to, you know, water these seeds that are coming up to make our profession better. So that's the thing. That's the biggest thing I want to, I want to get across to your audience is that you were pre PTs once and that you need to be grateful for where you are or where you want to be or however bad you think it is. Now, remember that you wanted to be here. Mm -hmm that you fought, that you applied, that you paid all that money, that you took the MPTE to be here. So don't complain about it now. Make it better for you through Aaron, make it better for the pre-PTs who are coming up by being grateful for where you're at. And if you're grateful for that, then that can change all of the other stuff that comes with growing a business and making our profession better. Because it can't just be me, can't just be Joseph, can't just be Aaron. Like this is much bigger than all of us. Yeah. And we all gotta change it as little or as much as we can make this profession like dentistry or physicians or I don't know pilots whatever to make it all better so that's the point I want to get across just please be grateful for where you're at because they are watching and they see you guys as guys they see you on a pedestal and if you remember where you were at and you're just grateful for where you are now I think that can change a lot of people's trajectory oh man that's awesome that's so important what do you think needs to change like what in our profession needs to change like if there was one thing or maybe two things, like what would you change and where do you think we need to go in the next five to 10 years? I don't know if I have a specific answer. That's a hard question. Yeah. It's easy because it really is easy to say we need to reduce student debt. Like, okay, yeah, duh. Like, of course, <laughs> right? Or we need to get paid more. Well, yeah, duh, of course. That's the easy answer to it. The harder question or the harder answer is, how do we innovate to make that happen, mm -hmm. right? Because everything, every other industry has to innovate, right? Whether it's tech, whether it's grocery stores, whether it's trucking industry, um, other healthcare professions, they have to innovate with the times. So the easy answer is, yeah, make more money. Oh, Medicare needs to pay us more. All right, fine. We've been sing singing that same song since before I even knew what PT was, right? right? The harder answer is, the harder question maybe, how do we innovate to make that happen? I don't know how yet. Maybe it's me doing what I'm doing and mm -hmm. educating pre PTs. Maybe it's me on this podcast. Uh, but I think we need to start asking that question and trying to figure out answers to it to solve the problems that everybody talks about. Yeah. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, no, that's awesome. Do you see any different problems right now that the coronavirus has been here for a few months? <laughs> you know, like, or is it still the same thing? Do you see anything new coming down the, you know, in the next months or years that, as PTs, we can innovate and solve different problems? Yeah, so with telehealth, I see what comes to mind is like a visual graph of the stock market. Mm -hmm. um, because when I say that, um, telehealth was kind of low before coronavirus now, then it spiked up because, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I gotta find patients. Then when patients start to come back, I think it's gonna dip a little bit. Then in a few years, it's gonna have a slow gradual incline over the next, I don't know, five, 10. Don't quote me on the years, but I think it's yeah. gradually gonna come back up. So I think that if you can buy low and sell high, if we're using stock market terms, I yeah. think this is your opportunity, your dip to get back in over the next year or so. When the kind of when the kind of flare or flash around telehealth has gone down a little bit, mm -hmm. I think this is your time to jump in. So now in the next five years and the 10 years, when we start to innovate, it's there. 
-hmm. as another, I guess, tool to use. It might not be your whole practice. It might be 10%. You might use it for discovery visits. I don't know what mm -hmm. you're using it for, but I think now is the time to just jump back in uh, to use it to innovate how you need to um, yeah. going forward. So that's the biggest thing that comes to mind yeah. in terms of what we can do. That's awesome. I totally uh, agree. I mean, I wasn't really doing it before this. You know, I was mm -hmm. helping people on video and phone, but not as part of our traditional, like as our, as a regular patient in our practice. And now right. that's everyone right now. And we're going to, and we're going to integrate back into seeing people in person and not everyone wants to be seen in person yet <laughs> either. So right. um, exactly. yeah, I, I totally exactly. agree with that. That's awesome. Well, Casey, if someone wants to learn more about you, whether they're a uh, pre PT, they're a PT or, you know, business owner, how do, how do they find you guys? Yeah, easiest way to find us where everything at is www.preptgrind.com. That's our website. That's our main website. Uh, all our social media is at preptgrind from YouTube to TikTok to a podcast to Facebook. All that stuff is at preptgrind. And if you want to email email us with specific questions, you can email us at preptgrind at preptgrind.com. <laughs> awesome. So preptgrind. Yeah. yeah, you know how there you y'all know how to work the internet. You can work <laughs> well, that's great. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. Um, it's just been awesome seeing everything that uh, you've done and grown as your career. And like, I know it's only getting started, but you've been doing this already for a handful of years. So um, congratulations on all your success. I'm looking forward to seeing what the next 10, 20 years bring for you. Um, thank you. Thank well, you. this is the Cash PG Lunch Hour podcast. So um, if you... Uh, if you got anything out of this, be sure you take a screenshot, um, shout us out on uh, Instagram, uh, share a story, tag me, tag Casey, go follow Casey, and we'll see you guys on the next show.